Hi everyone, I hope you're doing really well. Welcome to this episode where we're going to talk you through the principles of the assisted sale. Um, this comes about because at the start of the year we said that we want to try and do an assisted sale in 2022 all being well. And also in a previous episode I talked about having a database of direct-to-vendor uh, contacts and I'm going to, as I work through those, in the back of my mind I'm going to have an assisted sale as one of the exits that we could use as well as of course um, uh, potentially doing buying to let projects. Um, doing the Burr model and uh, we've got some comments in the previous episode that said they'd be interested in knowing a little bit more about assisted sales so thanks for your comments um, Joe, Harry and Phil we really appreciate those and if you liked it as well thanks for all the interaction if at any point you like this video please do give it a thumbs up we, we, we appreciate that sort of feedback so the assisted sale then so here are some, some principles um, sort of broad stroke uh, principles um, key characters involved you're going to have a vendor uh, of course, you're going to be involved too, and you're also going to have an exit. In this this case, we're going to call them, um, they're going to be a first-time buyer. Uh, there could be more people involved in this, but the fundamental principle is are these three uh, characters. Um, if at any point you're not sure, feel free to drop comments, um, and then I can either do a second episode clarifying them, or I can clarify them in the comments. So if you're not sure, ask your questions. So what we're going to use here by way of illustration is we're going to have a house that's in need of work it probably sounds quite familiar now if you've been watching this channel for a while and let's just say it's on the market now and in its current state as is we're going to say it's going to be worth eighty thousand pounds and the figures we're going to be using are the same figures we used in our playlist explaining the buy to let buy refurbish rent refinance model if you haven't seen that see the link down below but these are the same figures. So we've got a house in the market that needs work £80,000. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a refurbishment to it. And for way of illustration, we're going to say we're going to spend £20,000 on that. And then the end value, the house is going to be worth more. It's going to be now worth done up at £120,000. Now we've taken that same house and done the refurbishment. Now you might turn around and say to me, well, Josh, why don't you just buy it and do it as a flip? So let's just quickly work through that for a second. This is the this is the flip model. And we're going to say, there's going to be two parts to this. We're going to say we're doing cash first. So you buy a house in cash, you've got to have the cash. There's no cost to that, of course, if you already had £80,000. You will have to pay, though, I um, don't know why I've written that twice. You will have to pay um, legals and you will have to pay stamp duty, stamp duty, land tax. Uh, they are the, the costs that are gonna be for your purchase if you're gonna do a flip. Then of course you've got your 20,000 pounds refurb. And then of course you've got your end value of 120,000 pounds. That, that's just as a cash purchase. Let's do a flip again, but this time let's say we're gonna do it with some form, of, some form of loan. It could be private investor loan, it could be a bridge, it could be a mortgage, depending on the condition of the property. But then you've got to have the deposit. So the, the cash in here, there's no cost for your cash. It's same with the deposit, you've, there's, you've, got, you've already got the money, but you have got to pay for your loan. That's a cost, and the interest on that. You have to pay for your legal still, and stamp duty land tax because you're purchasing it will also be due. So a cash purchase is going to be more efficient if you're going to be doing a flip than if you did a flip using some form of loan. Of course, you still have your £20,000 for the refurbishment and you've got your end value of £120,000. So let's just say that your legal is going to cost £1,000 um, or 1,500, and let's just say your stamp duty land tax is going to be three and a half thousand pounds. So in this case, you've got five thousand pounds of costs. And this one, you've now got your legal and stamp duty land tax. Let's say that's a so uh, 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 that's uh, five thousand pounds, and your interest on your loan. Let's just say that's going to be two and a half thousand pounds. In costs. 
So if you to buy it, renovate it and sell it, you've, you've got £5,000 of costs, so you've only taken out £15,000. And here, if you have £7,500 of costs, then you've only got £12,500 of profit. So let's say, can we do this more efficiently than just buying it and selling it? Well, you can do what's called an assisted sale. So now you have a vendor that comes to you and says, or you meet the vendor, somehow they get in touch and say, look, I can offer you £80,000, but uh, what I need is I can offer you that as long as I can make a profit by doing a refurbishment. You know, let's um, let's 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 modernise your house and bring it up to you know standards now. So now you have your legals. You have a contract. This is the assisted sale, and you have a contract between the vendor and you. You have a contract. So what you're actually doing is you're not buying the house. You just have a contract to say, well, we will offer you £80,000. We'll pay £80,000 for a house once we've done the work and once we've sold it on to an, an exit, to a, um, a retail buyer. In this case, our first time buyer. So they agree on that. They have their legal costs and you have your legal costs. So there's, there's still legals in each of these examples. But yours is a contract um, rather than a conveyancing contract. There's still contracts, but this is a, a different type of contract. So now you go in, you spend your £20,000 doing the refurbishment. And now you have the house looking, at, looking beautiful at £120,000, as in the other two examples. So now you end up with a house of £120,000 and it's now done up. And now you work with an, a local estate agent and you sell it on the open market to a first time buyer and they pay £120,000. So they pay £120,000 and through the contract, your first time buyer, through the disbursements to the vendor, they get £80,000. You get the £20,000 difference minus the cost of the legals, which is going to be one and a half thousand pounds in costs. So now you have 18 and a half thousand pounds of profit, which is much more efficient way of taking a poor house in a poor condition and turn it into a beautiful house. You have now got 18,000 pounds in profit rather than either 15,000 pounds if you did it with cash or only 12 and a half thousand pounds if you did it with some form of loan. So that's the appeal of the assisted sale. If you found that interesting, please give us a thumbs up, if, or if you liked it. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do subscribe. And if you think anyone else would be interested in doing this or knowing about this, then please feel free to share it with them. Um, and we look forward to a future video where we are going to do some live direct-to-vendor calls where we're hoping that the assisted sale is one of the exits for us. Thank you, all of you, for watching. As always, we do appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you in the next one.